Hello and welcome to the Sunday Slate Breakdown for NFL Week 6. I'm your host, Matthew Mutter for Lamps.com, joined here by Jacob Wayne, Jason Gilbo, and Patrick Monin. And that next one is going to be the 49ers against the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons coming off a game in which they almost beat the Buccaneers. If there wasn't kind of a weird, very weird roughing the passer call, who knows what would have happened. But right now the spread is moving in the opposite direction than where I thought it was going to go. I think it opened at minus six and a half for the 49ers, now at minus five. Patrick, who are you on right now? Obviously a lot of injuries for the 49ers going on, but do you have them on the road against these this Falcons team? Yeah, I'll take the Falcons here for the simple fact of what you, you just mentioned. They're, they're really banged up right now between Williams, Ward, Armstead, Bosa, all this is just questionable. Even Jeff Wilson has a banged up shoulder. Looks like he's going to play, but still, still something to keep an eye on. And this Falcons team, I, I really like their offense. It's kind of this college blocking scheme. They're second right now in, in rush offense DVOA, 10th in total offense DVOA. I really like their guard play. Um, and, and this Niners team, they played well last week, but that was really a corpse of a team in, in Carolina. I think there's a little bit of line inflation just from – from that result, especially even if you take him back to the two weeks before, this Rams offense is really nothing to call home about either. So I think they're a little inflated from their performances against both of those teams. And then I also like this Falcons secondary a lot. I think they're a little underrated. I know advanced metrics don't have them crazy high right now. PFF does have their pass defense at six, but they've made life difficult for, for teams like Cleveland, Tampa Bay, and Seattle, which are all pretty solid offense. And so I think this is a solid matchup for, for the Falcons here, especially with the injuries. Uh, if this number gets up to six, which it doesn't look like it will at this point, then I really love it, but I, I still take it at the five and a half. Jacob? Yeah, uh, Falcons plus six was the first line I played this week. Um, I, I'm fine with it at five. That's fine. Um, I think the Falcons could win this game outright. The Niners are on their second straight road game this week. Um, difficult spot for them with all their injuries. And you look at their offensive metrics, and it's just it's just not that elite. They rank 26th in early down success, 22nd in early down EPA, and I think it's really a product of the offensive line slipping. Um, they did lose Lakin Tomlinson and Alex Mack in the offseason, and then they lost Trent Williams, obviously, to injury, and Colton McKivitz, who stepped in and played really well against the Rams, is hurt now, and now Aaron Banks is also hurt. So that, that offensive line is in rough shape, um, and their defense has been awesome, for sure, but now they're doing with a bunch of injuries, and they've also faced the second easiest strength of schedule by DVOA on defense. So I think they're probably not quite as good as they've looked. Um, and I think this Falcons team is really good, man. I mean, compared to what we expected from them, not really good as in the playoffs, but really good as, as far as like what we expected from them. Um, they're the number two team in rushing offense DVOA, despite really lacking a star running back. And it's because their offensive line has played so well. Chris Lindstrom at guard has been the top graded guard on PFF this season. And they rank fifth in QB pressure rate allowed. Um, against the banged at Niners defense on the road for their second straight game. They're going to put up points here, and Drake London uh, is healthy, Kyle Pitts is back in the lineup, and I don't know, I, I think the Falcons are going to be just fine in this matchup. Jason? Uh, yeah, I definitely lean Falcons here plus five, but for me, I mean, it, it was the best bet. I love the over in this game. Um, I'm going to take advantage of some of those injuries that were mentioned on the defensive side for the 49ers. I think that is a little bit of a let up for this team, so... Like, I am going to walk back those numbers um, in addition to the strength of schedule stuff. So I, th I do think it kind of comes back to a little bit more, maybe still above average, but it is closer probably to league average, I think, for what you'll see over the next few weeks. And, uh, yeah, Falcons have looked good. Like, the offense just kind of, you know, flows at times. Like, they've they've been able to put up points. And, and the defense, too. Like, I think the, the Niners won't really have that much trouble moving the ball still. Like, I think they're going to be creative enough behind Shanahan. And also the fact that the Falcons can't really generate a ton of pressure gives me confidence that Jimmy G can put up some points here uh, with Debo Samuel. And obviously, Ayuk and Kittle even got going last week. Um, so I think with the Niners putting up a fair share of points, and then also you look at the Falcons who can take advantage of some of those injury weaknesses, especially at home in a dome. Um, I think this number is a little bit too low. So I like the shootout potential, especially with everyone kind of on the Falcons, because I don't think this is really a low-scoring game that the Falcons would cover. I think it ends up being kind of a shootout. Yeah, I'm with Jason on over 44.5. I also feel like it, with what Jacob and Patrick, you guys are saying, I don't necessarily agree with everything. I personally would then look, but if I was more in agreement, I would look at the team total for Atlanta. Because I don't... I understand the metrics you brought up, Jacob, but I don't really buy that San Francisco is going to have, and especially Kyle Shanahan. I mean, 
maybe slight revenge game still. I don't know. It's been a while. But I don't think he's going to have any trouble moving the football in this one. I think the 49ers absolutely put up 24-plus points. So if you're on Atlanta, I, I think I would lean the team total for Atlanta's offense. I just to- lean the total for the game. Earlier in the week, I was really on the 49ers because around here in the Bay Area, I felt like we were hearing pretty positive news about Nick Bosa, and that's quickly turned sour. And I truly think that's the difference in this game between me picking the 49ers and me making a no bet and leaning Atlanta. So I like the over 44 and a half. I think there'll be plenty of offense. I, I don't see the 49ers struggling at all, but I also believe Atlanta will be able to move the football. I will say, yes, game Drake, London, and Kyle Pitts is back. And this is good. <laughs> Maybe this sounds crazy, but I, f- I really think they miss Cordero Patterson in the offense. I don't think the running backs they have back there are anything to write home about. I don't think they get much out of the pass game from the running backs, which would be very helpful. And Cordero Patterson was kind of a playmaker that was making a difference because he could do so much. He was much more than just your average running back. So, again, for all those reasons, I'm kind of off the spread. I love the over 44 and a half. Um, and, yeah, again, if, if I was on the spread, I'd probably just go Atlanta team total. Patrick, player props, if you have any. Yeah, Caleb Hawley over 26 and a half rushing yards. Um, I, he's gotten a lot more action since Patterson's been out of the lineup. And he's kind of a plug and chug back in this system. He isn't the bat that Patterson is, like you mentioned, but he he's not that far off. And, and especially with this prop that kind of shows it as way off, I, I think you're getting good value on it. I think this is really a, a run first attack here, especially with the injuries on the defensive front for the 49ers here. And I like him to get a lot of action. Jacob. Yeah. Uh, Patrick kind of stole my thunder with the Caleb Huntley pick, but I am going to put half a unit on Caleb Huntley to score a touchdown in this game at plus 300. I just think that's good value. Um, he has five resident carries over the last two weeks. And if this is kind of the higher scoring game that you guys are projecting, um, there should be some touchdown opportunities. And then, they aren't listing Kyle Pitts props yet, which is probably a good thing because I don't, I don't want to tempt myself into it. Um, so, you know what? I'll, I'll leave it there for right now. That's fair. So, do you want to place a unit on the rushing yards as well with Patrick? Um, I, need to re- I need to look more into that one. Just put, just put me down for a half unit for the touchdown for now. Sounds good. Jason? Uh, for me, I like Brendan Ayuk uh, over 40 and a half receptions. Er, 40 and a half receptions. That would be wild, wouldn't it? That would uh, be pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> uh, receiving yards, uh, I think it's a good spot for him. He's, you know, faced some tougher secondaries, I feel like, over the last few weeks. Um, but obviously, numbers are, are definitely always better with Jimmy G in there. So you can kind of trust those splits. I think it's going to be a much more kind of closer game that keeps the game script than throwing a little bit. So I think we can kind of see closer to six, seven targets per game considered the, the four that he's had the last two weeks. Um, yeah, and I think this is number solid. It's a good spot for him against a defense that ranks 26 in DVOA against wide receiver twos. So um, I'll back at you here. Yeah, and I'm going to back a couple of 49ers. First of all, Debo Samuel over 15 and a half r- rushing yards at minus 120. I think you're getting a very big discount this week. And that's because... He had five attempts for six yards against Denver because Denver has a good defense. He only had two attempts against the Rams because Kyle Shanahan realized the way to beat the Rams was to get Debo the ball in space on a screen. And then Carolina, two for 12. He didn't need the rush of football. They went 37 to 15. No reason to risk Debo getting injured running the football. This game, Jacob Patrick predicting it to be close. Jason predicting it to be a shootout. I think Debo will have to rush the football. If he gets two, three attempts in this game, very high chance he gets over 15 and a half against his very porous Atlanta rush defense. For that reason, I also like Jeff Wilson over 66 and a half rushing yards at minus 115. And then honestly, my favorite play out of all three of these are, is Jeff Wilson over 15 and a half longest rush. He's had some monstrous explosive plays the past few weeks. I think that continues again against an Atlanta rush defense. That's not very good unless you're Leonard Fournette and you know, you just can't do it anymore, apparently. Anything else you guys want to touch on? All right. So let's go over the picks. Patrick, Jacob on Atlanta Falcons plus five. Jason and myself on the over 44 and a half. Patrick on Caleb Hutley over 26 and a half rushing yards minus 115. Jacob, half unit for Caleb Hutley to score a touchdown. Over 40 and a half receiving yards at minus 115 for Brandon Ayuk for Patrick. I have, or... 
for Jason, sorry, excuse me. I have over 15 and a half rushing yards for Debo Samuel, over 66 and a half rushing yards for Jeff Wilson, and over 15 and a half longest rush for Jeff Wilson. And let us move on to the next one. Thank you guys for watching. As always, you can hit the like button if you like this video. Hit the dislike if you did not. Comment down below your favorite bets. Also, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Also, click the bell if you want to get notified when our videos go up. Don't forget to check out Lamps.com. We have articles for every single game, including player prop articles, same game parlay articles, and matchup previews, as well as the fact that you can find promo code information, new user bonus information, and state legal sports betting guides. And we'll see you for the next one very soon.